Hi, this is Tom Moore with AWS. Today we're going to talk about using the AWS Launch Wizard to deploy enterprise applications into your AWS account. In this video, we're going to cover the following. We'll talk a little bit about what Launch Wizard is and how it helps you to deploy your applications. We use Launch Wizard to launch a fully functional SQL Server Always On deployment. Once the deployment is completed, we'll explore the resources that were created. And finally, I'll show you how to tear down the resources and clean up your account. AWS Launch Wizard is a guided way of sizing, configuring, and deploying AWS resources for third-party applications, such as SAP HANA and Microsoft SQL Server. With Launch Wizard, you're not only provisioning and setting up the AWS infrastructure for your deployment, you're also installing and configuring the third-party application and best practices configurations. Launch Wizard goes beyond CloudFormation and provides guidance around the architecture of your deployment and the application you're deploying. Launch Wizard then helps you generate the required CloudFormation templates, deploys them for you into your account, and then leaves them in a ready-to-use state. Let's take a look at the options for deploying SQL Server. As you can see here, Launch Wizard can deploy Microsoft SQL Server in a two availability zone configuration. This will include a remote desktop gateway, primary and secondary SQL servers configured with SQL Server always on, and Amazon's managed Microsoft Active Directory service to help with authentication. The SQL Server instances are automatically deployed into two different subnets using two different availability zones for fault tolerance. You also have the option of deploying SQL Server always on in the three server configuration using a third availability zone for even greater fault tolerance. Our website has a user guide for the AWS Launch Wizard and the products that you can deploy. Let's have a look at Launch Wizard in the AWS console. I'm here in the AWS console. The first thing I need to do is select the Launch Wizard service. I can do that by typing into the search window and selecting Launch Wizard. Next, I'm gonna click the Create Deployment button I can then choose my product. At the moment, I have available SQL Server and SAP. I'm going to leave SQL Server selected. Launch Wizard requires permissions to interact with your account. To do this, it will create an Amazon EC2 role for Launch Wizard for you, if that role does not already exist. If you've been through Launch Wizard previously, this step will not appear. I'm going to click Next. I can then provide the parameters I need to configure my application. First thing I need to do is supply a deployment name. We'll call it SQLHA for high availability. I can optionally provide an SNS topic for notifications when my launch wizard setup is complete. I'm going to skip that for now. Under connectivity, I need to choose a, a key pair, which will allow me to log into the SQL Server instances. This is used to encrypt your, your password. I'll choose a key pair that I already have and have access to. Under tenancy mode, I can select either shared tenancy, which is the default, or dedicated. I'm going to choose shared. Under VPC, you can select an existing VPC, or you can select the option to create a new VPC. I'll select create a new VPC here. I can provide a tag name which I'm going to use SQLHA again. For remote de desktop gateway access, I've got a number of options. This allows me to restrict the addresses which my 
remote desktop gateway service will allow connections. In this case, I'm just going to leave the default of my IP. This will restrict remote desktop connections to the IP address that I'm currently connecting from. You can select an existing Active Directory here if you have one, or create a new managed Active Directory for you. In this case, since my account does not currently have an Active Directory, the only option I have is to create a new one. It's worth noting here that Active Directory is Amazon's managed Microsoft Active Directory service. This will create a new Active Directory for us. If you want to integrate this setup with your on-prem users, you can do this by establishing a cross-forest trust. I'll need to provide a password for the admin account. And validate that password. I'll also need to provide a, a domain name for DNS. For SQL Server, I'll need to provide an account name. Now, because this is an, a new Active Directory, my only option here is to create a new service account. And provide a password. I can then choose whether to use the Amazon provided license included AMI or my own custom AMI. If I want to use bring my own license option for SQL Server, I must provide my own custom AMI to start from my own model. Since I'm using a license included AMI, I'm able to choose from a selection of, of different options. I'm going to choose the latest option. There are a number of additional SQL Server settings that you can set here, including things like the SQL Server node names, additional SQL Server nodes, and potentially a witness node. I'm going to click Next. On the next stage of the wizard, I can select the instance types that I want to use based on infrastructure or instance type. And in scrolling down to the bottom, I can see an estimate of the cost of my deployment. I'm going to click Next here. Once I'm ready to deploy, I can simply click the Deploy button. Once I've clicked Deploy, I get an entry here in my Deployments section. And I can see a message saying deployment SQL HA is in progress. This will take some time to complete because it does have to spin up quite a lot of, of infrastructure in order to support the SQL Server environment. I'll pause the video now and allow the deployment to complete. Launch Wizard has taken approximately two hours to complete spinning up all of the resources in my AWS account. Now that Launch Wizard has completed creating my resources, let's have a look at what was created inside of my account. If I look at directory services, I told Launch Wizard to create a new Amazon managed active directory inside of my account, and it's done so here, for example.com. I can see that three EC2 instances have been created, two of them for the SQL Server instances that I requested be created, and a remote desktop gateway that allows me to log into my resources. 
Here, I can see that only the remote desktop gateway has a public IP address. In accordance with best practices, the SQL servers have been deployed into private availability zones with no public IP addresses. All of this infrastructure was created using CloudFormation. So I can see here the CloudFormation stacks that have been created in my account. And I can use CloudFormation to also remove the resources when I'm done. Finally, a resource group was created to collect all of my resources in one easy view. I can see here in the resource groups view all of the resources that were created for this project. Our website has full documentation on the launch wizard and the products that you can deploy using it. Finally, let's have a look at how you can remove the resources and clean up your account if you decide that the implementation is no longer required. Back in the launch wizard portion of the console, I can see my SQL Server deployments by clicking SQL Server. I can select the deployment and click Delete. The wizard is going to ask you to confirm that you want to remove all of your resources and list some of the resources that are going to be removed. For example, the VPC, the Active Directory, and the SQL Server instances that have been created. I need to type Delete in order to confirm. Once I've done that, you can see the provisioning status goes to delete in progress. Now this will take some time as the resources are all removed from my account. Once this is done, I'll stop incurring charges for the deployed infrastructure. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful.